think Hurry, Mr. Bergeron's on Don't forget the popcorn, Frank Coming, dear Well, first of all, as you pointed out, we are in winter right now. Uh, fortunately, we don't have much snow or ice. In the past few winters, we've had a tremendous, tremendous, <laughs> tremendous <laughs> amount. Yep. And uh, from where I sit, um, unfortunately, that's, quote, good for business. Yep. Um, not only are there a number of automobile accidents caused by the snow and ice, but the slip and fall cases as well. Yep. And just before I get into the, the car aspect, I think it is important to talk to the audience a little bit about slip and fall cases on ice mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. as many of your viewers, I'm assuming, are homeowners and it's important to know that in Massachusetts, the law now says that a homeowner has an absolute responsibility to make sure that their driveways and their walkways are shoveled, sanded, salted so that if anyone were to slip and fall at your home, mm -hmm. you want to make sure that you've taken the necessary precautions to do that. Now, of by the way, does that apply to your, the driveway that's on your land and the sidewalk that's on your land? What about if you have a public sidewalk that goes ac you know, across the front of your house? Right. Um, well, that's, that's an interesting question. I just had a case last year that we settled involving that. You need to check with each community to see what the local bylaw says. For for instance, oh, wow. it varies in the, by town. It varies by town. In the city wow. of in the yeah. city of Worcester, uh, there is a bylaw which requires anyone who fr whose property fronts on a public way, yeah. they have a responsibility to um, to shovel not only their property but to shovel the sidewalk in front of their property, um, and they have a reasonable time within which to clear that pathway, yeah. um, but it's something that they cannot ignore uh, because they would not only face fines from the city or from the town, yeah. but also the liability that comes in. So I just wanted to, you know, because we are in this season of, of slip and falls, yeah. to alert the homeowners to be careful and to, to make sure that you're taking care of it. Because until two years ago in Massachusetts, the Supreme Court of Massachusetts basically said, you know, if it's a natural accumulation of snow and ice, we here in Massachusetts are hardy New Englanders. <laughs> we could take tough care. luck. And um, that, that has changed. Mm -hmm. And so I think homeowners and business owners need to be very aware of that and very careful about that. I, and aware of it if you fall on somebody's property. And you might not have otherwise assumed, right, that there was liability there, but there may be liability. Right. There. And that's a good point that you mentioned. If you do fall on another person's property, um, Massachusetts does have a little trap for the unwary is what they call it, is you have to provide written notice to the landowner within a very short period of time. All right? And again, you need to check your, your town bylaws yep. and city bylaws, but by statute, um, within 30 days, you need to take some affirmative action, um, which is only fair in that the homeowner or the business owner needs to have an opportunity to say, so-and-so says they slipped and fell, well, let me go out and talk to who was supposed to shovel, right. take pictures of the property, those types of things. Right. So right. Uh, it is something to be aware of. That's, well, that's really helpful. That's okay. I think that's really right. helpful for a lot of, well, it's helpful <coughs> for me, right? But it's helpful for a lot of folks. Yeah. So talk to us a little bit about cars. Sure. You know, cars and car accidents yeah. and car pe versus pedestrian right. situations. Right, right. Um, <coughs> Law in Massachusetts, when there's a motor vehicle, and that would include a motor scooter or a car or a van or a truck or bus, whatever, yeah. when you're involved in an accident there, Massachusetts is what's called a no-fault state, yeah. which means that whether it's your fault, Arthur, or my fault, if we're in a two-car collision, yeah. our own insurance company will be responsible for paying the first $2,000 in medical bills, and that's called the PIP, or Personal Injury Protection Statute. And <coughs> so your car insurance company will make those payments. Mm -hmm. If you reach the level of $2,000 of medical bills, mm -hmm. then you are eligible in Massachusetts to bring a claim for any permanent injury that you have or for any significant pain and suffering. I see. If you are in an accident and you go to the hospital, um, they treat you and they say you're fine, you go to the doctor the next day, he gives you some Advil or whatever, you may in fact not reach that level of $2,000, and if you don't, then you don't have a claim. And that $2,000, that's whether or not that $2,000 is insured 
It, it's just two thousand dollars. Period. Two thousand. Oh, I see. Because you told me bills. that's always insured. Because because your own your own. Insurance. If I get hit and yeah. I go to the hospital, my insurance is going to cover that first two thousand. Right. And then what does my insurance company kind of settle up with the other person's insurance company exactly. to, to deal with? That? Exactly. I see. I see. They deal with that that, I that directly. But if right. the total of the bills is more than two thousand dollars. Then from then on in, then I then I have the right at least to take t some action against the other side. That's right, that's right. I get it. All right. The other thing is, if you are involved in an accident, whether it's your fault or the other driver's fault, uh, you need to report that immediately to your insurance company. Um, and there's every insurance company has a hotline number that you'll find in your policy or in mm -hmm. one of the letters from your insurance company. Yeah. And yeah. you need to do that because some insurance companies may take the position. If they're not a, a made aware of that immediately, the day of the accident, they'll claim prejudice and it may make it difficult for you to get all of your bills paid or they may make it difficult. So make sure that you notify your insurance company. I see. So you don't have a, like a given amount of time by statute or something to notify the insurance company. No. You're just dealing with them. And, and if you don't alert them right away, you're kind of at their mercy to some extent if they right. want to. And I suppose. If I'm the insurance company, the bigger the claim, the more I'm interested in kind of, you know, shuffling it off, right? And therefore saying, oh, you didn't notify me right away, and therefore I'm not going to. So the big, right. you know, if it's serious, you got to notify people right away. Yes. I see. Yep. I see. So that, that's an important aspect. Um, one of the most important aspects involving car accident cases mm -hmm. for whether it's senior citizens or teenagers or whatever is I try to impress this upon all of my clients, all of my friends, family members. Yep. Do you have enough underinsurance? What does this mean? Okay. What does that mean? Do you, do you know what underinsurance is? I have is? no idea. All right. And you are a very well-educated um, college if graduate, ever, law if school I've graduate. Read, if I've ever read my insurance. Book. Okay. No. Right. When you are no different than 99% of the people that I deal with on a regular basis. Right. But the most important thing when you are getting car insurance is to make sure you have $250,000 slash $500,000 in under insurance. That's the maximum that you can buy mm -hmm. generally in Massachusetts, although there are some policies that may be three hundred dollars or six hundred. dollars You want to buy the maximum so that you can also buy an umbrella policy. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm sure that, that many of your viewers have umbrella policies for their home, uh, an umbrella policy is important in case there's some kind of catastrophic injury and you want to protect your assets, you want to have that available. But what is under insurance? Yes, yeah, tell me about that. All right. In Massachusetts. I'd like to say tell the viewers about it, but it's really because well, right? I have no <laughs> idea what this is now. All right. In Massachusetts, in order to have a car on the road, you mm -hmm. need to have compulsory insurance of 20,000 slash 40,000. What those two numbers means, mm -hmm. if you're in an accident and mm -hmm. it's your fault and someone is hurt, yeah. there's a maximum amount of insurance of $20,000 available for that injured party. And, I, and, and by law, I have to be carrying at you, least $20,000 worth of insurance for that injured party. That's right. In, in case I'm the one that's at fault. Right. And, and what's the 40000 The 40 is if there are several people in the other car and you're responsible. The most your insurance company will have to pay, mm -hmm. because it was your fault, to let's say the three people in the other car right. is a total of forty thousand. So see. no one person that's injured can recover more than twenty, and the total group of the three people can recover a total of no more than forty thousand. And I can get it, and I can get my car on the road by having insurance that that low. That's right. And I see. And what shocks me is the number of people in Massachusetts that only get the 20,000, 40,000. And the tragedy is that I see is when my client is hit by a drunk driver or a very careless driver with an old car, they will typically only have 20,000, 40,000 of an insurance. So if I have a client who has a leg amputated or who ends up in a wheelchair as a result of some horrible negligence of, of a defendant. Yeah. The most that's available there is $20,000. And I that $20,000, a hospital and your health insurance will have what they call a lien on any settlement proceeds. So 
the injured party generally might get zero if the other party only has 20,000, 40,000. Because, so, because the hospital bills take priority over any, any amount that could come back to me as the injured party for pain and suffering or for any of these exactly, things. Exactly, exactly, exactly. That doesn't, $40,000 doesn't sound like a lot when you're, when you're it talking is, about it hospital It is, and these days, you know, the, the uh, bills with MRIs or CT scans are thousands of dollars, so it doesn't take much of an accident. Right. So 